There's a lovely little verse in the Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 9. And it says, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. And how often in life we make our plans, we get out our schedules and our maps and uh, call up the airlines, whatever it is, and we make our schedules and then things happen. A flat tire, a, a delayed flight, uh, someone we bump into maybe in the restroom or at the restaurant and things change. And all of a sudden we realize there's a hand upon our lives. There's someone who is directing our steps. We may make these general plans, but the Lord steps in and he intervenes and he introduces into our lives opportunities to show his grace, to manifest his love, to share the gospel, to encourage another believer. Way back in the early days of my traveling preaching, 45 years ago, I was invited to a small assembly down in Waynesboro, Georgia, and I was asked to speak for a week on the church and then a week of children's meetings. And so we went down and had those. I was driving my, a car in those days, a, an old Buick, and um, I had finished up, and the last evening, Friday evening, a couple were very interested in the things of God, and they invited me to their home and we spent several hours talking about the things of God. Well, it was almost midnight when I got away, and I headed north, and I hadn't seen my father in quite a long time. He was traveling, preaching, I was traveling, and we hadn't been able to connect. And he was up in Long Island, New York, and I decided I would go and visit him on the way home. So I drove through the night. I think I had a short snooze somewhere around the North Carolina border, but I continued on until I got up to Wilmington, Delaware. So this was Saturday morning and um, I ran out of cash. And in those days I didn't have credit cards and that sort of thing. So here I was stuck. The uh, local church there had given me two checks. One was fellowship in the work of the Lord, very kindly, they've been very generous with me. It was a substantial check. The other one was a reimbursement for some supplies I had bought for the children's meetings. And it was maybe $12, $15, I don't remember what it was, but it would have been enough for me to pay my tolls. When I grew up in Ontario, there were no toll roads at all, but over on the East Coast, lots of toll roads. And so I needed just a little bit of money to get through to get over to Long Island. Well, the banks were all closed, and I pulled into a large grocery store and, and there was an office and there were some people standing in line and I got into the line and as we worked our way up, I heard the people up ahead of me. They had to check to cash and so they showed their ID and all looked after. But when I got up, there was a gentleman there serving and so I passed through this check and asked if I could uh, cash it and he looked at it and it was from Georgia and it was dated the day before and here I was the next day at breakfast time already in Wilmington, Delaware. And so he asked me about that and I said, well, they gave it to me last evening and I drove through the night uh, here. I'm on my way up to see my father. And, um, and so he asked for my ID. Well, when I showed it, I was from Canada. And so here I'm a Canadian with a Georgia check written the night before in Wilmington, Delaware, Saturday morning at a grocery store. And it looked uh, pretty slim that I was going to get it cashed. And there were five or six people working in there. And they all said, uh, don't do it, man. You know, it's going to come out of your salary if, if it doesn't work. And he said, you know, they're right that uh, I'll have to be good for this if it bounces. So he said to me, well, who's this group here, this uh, Brookhaven Chapel? And so I explained what had happened and I'd had these children's meetings and they'd reimbursed me for some supplies I'd purchased. And uh, he stood back and he said, oh, I see. He said, well, I, I think the Lord would have me cast this check for you. <laughs> and it just was such an encouragement. Here I was a young preacher out in the middle of nowhere 
but God has his agents everywhere and he stepped in and he helped me in that situation. Well, I got back in the car and I was able to make my way up to Throg's Neck Bridge, which I had to take across to Long Island. And I had the address in Manhasset where my father was staying, but I had no idea where that was. No GPS in those days. And so when I got across the bridge, I pulled over to the side and I was sitting looking at my map and another couple pulled up beside me in a convertible, an older couple, maybe 50s and 60s, I don't know what they were. And so the man spoke to me and said, what are you looking for? And I said, well, I, I'm going to Manhasset. He said, well, Manhasset's a big area. Where specifically are you going in Manhasset? And Manhasset is an area, it's kind of countryside, a lot of winding roads and wooded areas and so on. Not easy to get to. Well, anyway, I picked up this piece of paper and I read the address to him. And he said, follow us. We live right across the street. <laughs> and so we headed off, winding around, beautiful area, lovely roads through the, the countryside and uphill and downdale. And he brought me right to the door. And I was just so encouraged that the God of heaven cared about this young preacher trying to find his way, that the Lord actually placed a couple right beside me at the Throg's Neck Bridge that took me and reminded me again, a man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. That's why it's so important in all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our past.